What's delaying deployment of critical sensors on one of Washington's most explosive volcanoes? Now, Fox 13 first told you a months-long effort of installing extra listening gear at Glacier Peak. Hidden among the misty peaks of Washington State lies a volcano you've likely never heard of. But the USGS warns it could be America's most dangerous ticking time bomb. Glacier Peak, a silent giant cloaked in mystery, has erupted with explosive fury before, leaving trails of destruction that stretched for hundreds of miles. Now, scientists believe it's not a matter of if, but when it will erupt again, and its potential impact could eclipse Yellowstone. What secrets does this sleeping behemoth hold? And why is it being called a greater threat than the world's most famous supervolcano? Stay tuned as we uncover the dark truths of Glacier Peak and the danger it poses to millions. The state of Washington is home to seven active volcanoes, all part of the volatile Cascade Mountain Range. While Mount St. Helens, with its infamous 1980 eruption, often dominates public awareness, another less famous volcano may pose an even greater threat. Glacier Peak. This towering giant, draped in ice and shrouded in mystery, last erupted approximately 324 years ago and scientists warn that its history and potential for future destruction make it one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the United States. Before we delve deeper, let's explore why the Cascade volcanoes exist. The Cascades are a direct result of the subduction process, the mechanism by which old oceanic crust is returned to the mantle. This subduction involves a trio of smaller tectonic plates, the Juan de Fuca, Explorer, and Gorda plates. These plates are the remnants of the once larger Farallon plate, which fractured over time and has since been almost entirely subducted, playing a role in the formation of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Today, these microplates are continually moving beneath North America at a rate of approximately 3.5 centimeters per year. As they slide beneath the continent, they dip steeply at around 55 degrees from horizontal in the Cascades region. By the time they are about 70 to 100 kilometers from the trench, they reach a depth of around 100 kilometers, becoming significantly hotter due to the pressure and the geothermal gradient deep within the Earth. However, the process of subduction doesn't simply melt the subducting plate to form magma. Instead, it triggers complex mineral reactions within the plate. As the oceanic plate descends into the mantle, trapped water within specific minerals undergoes dehydration reactions releasing water and other fluids upwards into the mantle wedge situated between the downgoing plate and the overlying North American plate. This water injection acts like a catalyst, lowering the melting point of the mantle. The result is partial melting, where the mantle transforms from a solid state into partially molten magma. This molten material then ascends to the surface, forming the volcanic arcs characteristic of the Cascades. Without the subduction of these microplates beneath North America, there would be no Cascade Range. The Cascades are not the only place where subduction-related volcanism occurs. Similar volcanic activity can be found along the western coasts of other continents. For example, subduction beneath South America forms the Andes. Japan's volcanic islands are the result of subduction beneath the Pacific Plate. The Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia is shaped by the subduction of the Pacific Plate beneath it. And the islands of New Zealand and Indonesia are volcanic due to subduction processes as well. These regions share a common mechanism of tectonic plates sliding beneath continental plates, which leads to the melting of the mantle and the subsequent formation of magma. The subduction process is crucial for the Earth's crustal balance. It not only recycles old oceanic crust back into the mantle, but also creates new crust at mid-ocean ridges. The Cascades are a key piece of this ongoing cycle with their volcanic activity contributing to the dynamic nature of the Earth's surface. The subduction of microplates like the Juan de Fuca and Gorda plates beneath North America not only forms the Cascades, but also triggers the complex geological processes that result in their explosive eruptions and the formation of hazards like pyroclastic flows, lahars, and widespread ashfall. The continuous subduction of these plates not only maintains the Earth's crust, but also demonstrates the interconnectedness of geological processes across the globe. Rising to 3,213 meters, 10,543 feet above sea level, Glacier Peak is aptly named for the more than a dozen glaciers that blanket its slopes. These icy formations not only give the volcano its striking appearance, 
but also contribute to its hazardous potential. In the event of an eruption, the intense heat could rapidly melt these glaciers, unleashing massive lahars, fast-moving flows of mud, rock, and debris. Such an event could inundate areas up to 71 miles from the summit, threatening over 67,000 lives and leaving a path of devastation in its wake. Unlike the more famous Mount St. Helens, Glacier Peak's eruptions are less well-known, but no less dramatic. Over the past 20,000 years, it has produced multiple Plinian eruptions, characterized by towering columns of ash and gas that can reach the stratosphere. Some of these eruptions were even more powerful than Mount St. Helens. Helens 1980 eruption, dispersing ash across vast swathes of land and leaving a lasting mark on the geological record. This hidden volatility makes Glacier Peak a silent but dangerous threat, often overshadowed by its more iconic neighbors. Located approximately 65 miles northeast of Seattle in the rugged wilderness of north-central Washington, Glacier Peak owes its existence to the ongoing collision of tectonic plates. The Juan de Fuca plate is subducting beneath the North American plate offshore, creating the conditions for magma to rise and form a chain of volcanoes that includes Glacier Peak. This geologic setting has not only fueled the volcano's fiery past, but also contributed to its unique and rugged landscape. From above, Glacier Peak appears jagged and eroded, a result of both explosive eruptions and relentless glacial sculpting over millennia. The origins of Glacier Peak date back between 600,000 and 200,000 years, as indicated by the oldest radiometric dating of its lava flows. Early eruptions built a massive volcanic cone comprised of thick, viscous andesite lava flows and layers of ash. However, this cone was repeatedly carved and reshaped by advancing and retreating glaciers during the Ice Age. As a result, much of the volcano's softer ash layers eroded away, leaving behind ridges that mark the pathways of ancient lava flows. Interestingly, Glacier Peak's activity hasn't been confined to its summit. Over the last 50,000 years, several eruptions have occurred from flank vents, forming distinct cinder cones and spectacular Strombolian-style eruptions. These eruptions generated rivers of lava that snaked through glacially carved valleys, adding to the volcano's already complex landscape. Today, the remnants of these flank eruptions provide a glimpse into the volcano's dynamic and varied eruptive behavior. The youngest volcanic vent associated with Glacier Peak is the Whitechuck Cinder Cone, formed approximately 15,000 years ago during a moderately explosive eruption. This event coincided with the retreat of glaciers following the last glacial maximum, signaling a shift in the volcano's activity as the ice sheets receded. However, Glacier Peak's history is marked not just by isolated events, but by periods of intense and catastrophic eruptions that left their imprint far beyond its immediate surroundings. The most energetic chapter in Glacier Peak's eruptive history occurred between 13,000 and 9,200 years ago. During this period, the volcano unleashed six major eruptions, four of which were Plinian, a classification reserved for eruptions with towering ash columns and significant explosivity. These events reached a Volcanic Explosivity Index VEI, of 4 or 5, making them comparable in magnitude to some of the most devastating eruptions in recorded history. The eruptions ejected vast quantities of ash, covering areas in modern-day Washington, Idaho, Montana, British Columbia, and Alberta. In addition to ashfall, these eruptions generated pyroclastic flows, deadly avalanches of hot gas, ash, and volcanic debris that surged up to 62 miles, 100 kilometers, from the summit. These flows melted vast amounts of glacial ice, creating immense lahars, fast-moving volcanic mudflows, that traveled down river valleys and extended as far as the Pacific Ocean. The largest of these eruptions produced an estimated 6.2 cubic kilometers of tephra, a volume five times greater than the material ejected during Mount St. Helens' catastrophic 1980 eruption. These events reshaped the landscape and demonstrated Glacier Peak's potential for widespread destruction. Following a long period of dormancy, Glacier Peak's eruptions resumed around 6,000 years ago, initiating a series of six eruptions. Five of these events were marked by the growth of lava domes, as viscous magma accumulated near the surface. These domes frequently collapsed, generating pyroclastic flows that swept across the slopes, further emphasizing the volcano's volatile nature. However, 
the most recent eruption, occurring around 1700, was a departure from this pattern. This event was a phreatic eruption, caused not by magma reaching the surface, but by the explosive interaction of volcanic gases and groundwater heated to extreme temperatures. Although Glacier Peak has remained dormant for over 300 years, signs of its underlying volcanic activity persist. Hot springs dotting its flanks are evidence of the heat still emanating from the magma chamber deep beneath the surface. This quiet activity serves as a stark reminder that Glacier Peak is far from extinct. Scientists closely monitor these indicators, as they suggest the potential for future unrest. The hazards posed by Glacier Peak extend far beyond its immediate vicinity. An eruption today could disrupt air traffic across the Pacific Northwest, as ash clouds from past eruptions reached altitudes capable of endangering aircraft. Widespread ashfall could affect agriculture, infrastructure, and public health over vast areas. The lahars triggered by glacial melting could inundate populated valleys, threatening thousands of lives and causing extensive damage to property and ecosystems. These factors, combined with the volcano's explosive history, have led the U.S. Geological Survey USGS, to classify Glacier Peak as a very high threat volcano, one of the most dangerous in the Cascade Range. Despite its remote location, Glacier Peak's potential for catastrophic eruptions places it high on the list of volcanoes to watch. With its explosive history, massive glacial cover, and proximity to populated areas, it represents a significant hazard not just to Washington State, but to the broader Pacific Northwest. Scientists continue to monitor this sleeping giant, knowing that its next eruption could have devastating consequences for the region and beyond. As the least known but most dangerous volcano in Washington, Glacier Peak stands as a reminder of the immense power hidden beneath Earth's surface. Why does the USGS classify Glacier Peak as more dangerous than Yellowstone? The USGS considers Glacier Peak more dangerous than the Yellowstone supervolcano because of its higher likelihood of eruption, closer proximity to populated areas, and the immediate and varied hazards it poses. While Yellowstone's supereruption potential is globally significant, Glacier Peak represents a more pressing and localized threat in the foreseeable future. Glacier Peak is far more likely to erupt soon due to its recent and frequent activity. The last confirmed eruption of Glacier Peak occurred around 1700 AD, and the volcano has experienced multiple eruptions over the past 20,000 years, including six major eruptions between 13,000 and 9,200 years ago. These eruptions were highly explosive, with several reaching a Volcanic Explosivity Index VEI, of 4 or 5. By contrast, Yellowstone has not erupted in over 640,000 years, and its magma system shows no signs of the pressure buildup necessary for an eruption in the near term. While Yellowstone's super-eruption potential is concerning, such events occur on timescales of hundreds of thousands of years, making it an extremely low probability event. Glacier Peak's location in the Pacific Northwest places it alarmingly close to densely populated regions. The volcano is just 65 miles northeast of Seattle, and its potential hazards threaten over 67,000 people living in nearby valleys and river basins. In the event of an eruption, lahars, destructive volcanic mudflows caused by the rapid melting of the volcano's glaciers, could inundate communities, travel through river systems, and reach distances up to 71 miles from the summit. These flows are unpredictable and can occur with little warning, even during minor eruptions. Yellowstone, on the other hand, is situated in a relatively remote part of Wyoming. While an eruption there could affect nearby towns and infrastructure, its localized impacts would be less severe because fewer people live within its immediate hazard zone. A unique factor contributing to Glacier Peak's danger is its extensive glacial coverage. The volcano is blanketed by more than a dozen glaciers, which significantly amplify its destructive potential. During an eruption, intense heat can melt these glaciers, triggering lahars that can devastate areas downstream. These mudflows, composed of volcanic debris and water, move rapidly, destroying everything in their path. Glacier Peak's lahars have historically traveled as far as the Pacific Ocean, threatening a vast region. Yellowstone lacks significant glacial coverage, so it does not pose the same lahar threat. Glacier Peak has a history of frequent and highly explosive eruptions. 
Over the past 20,000 years, the volcano has repeatedly produced Plinian eruptions that sent towering ash columns into the stratosphere. Some of these eruptions were even more powerful than Mount St. Helens. Helens' 1980 eruption, dispersing ash across Washington, Idaho, Montana, British Columbia, and Alberta. This history of frequent activity underscores the potential for similar events in the near future. In contrast, Yellowstone's massive eruptions are far less frequent. Its last major event was a super eruption 640,000 years ago. And while it continues to produce geothermal activity, such as geysers and hot springs, it has shown no clear signs of an impending eruption. Both volcanoes pose risks related to ashfall, but Glacier Peak's more frequent eruptions make this threat more immediate. Ash from its past eruptions has covered vast areas, affecting agriculture, water supplies, and infrastructure, as well as disrupting air traffic. The Pacific Northwest is a major hub for air travel, and an ash cloud from Glacier Peak could cause widespread flight cancellations and pose dangers to aircraft. Yellowstone's ashfall, while potentially more widespread in a super eruption, is not a pressing concern due to the low likelihood of such an event occurring anytime soon. Because of its recent activity, proximity to populated areas, and the significant hazards it poses, Glacier Peak is classified by the USGS as a very high threat volcano. This designation reflects the urgent need for monitoring and preparedness. Scientists continue to study the volcano's magma system, geothermal activity, and potential eruption scenarios to provide early warnings and mitigate risks. In contrast, Yellowstone is closely monitored as a supervolcano, but its immediate threat level is considered lower, because an eruption is not expected in the foreseeable future. In a nutshell, while Yellowstone's potential for a super-eruption garners significant attention due to its potential for global catastrophe, Glacier Peak represents a far more immediate and localized threat. Its history of frequent explosive eruptions, extensive glacial coverage, and proximity to populated areas make it one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the United States. An eruption at Glacier Peak could result in deadly lahars, widespread ashfall, and significant disruptions to infrastructure and air travel. The USGS prioritizes hazards based on likelihood and impact, and Glacier Peak's combination of activity, geography, and hazards places it high on the list of volcanoes to watch. Remember, knowing the science behind these dangers is the first step towards protecting ourselves and our communities from volcanic hazards. Stay informed, stay prepared, and keep watching this space for the latest updates on our planet's dynamic geology. Thanks for joining us on this journey through one of America's most dangerous volcanoes. Stay safe and see you next time.